The linear pattern tool allows you to replicate geometry in a linear fashion. It allows you to pattern geometry in a single direction or two separate directions in a single step. The copies are referred to as instances and are based on the original geometry, which is referred to as the seed. If changes are made to the seed, the patterned instances will automatically update to reflect the changes. In this lesson, we will see a few examples of how the linear pattern feature works and also cover some of its options. Please consider subscribing to the channel and like the video and let's begin the lesson. In this exercise, we're going to use this model on screen and use the linear pattern feature to create a pattern of the button. The button would be considered the seed and any copies of it would be referred to as the instances. You can download the exercise files in the description of this video. Please be aware that you need SOLIDWORKS 2019 or newer to actually open the files. To start the linear pattern feature, you can either go to the top menu, go to insert and then pattern mirror. And from there you should see the linear pattern or with the features tab activated on the command manager, just go over to linear pattern, click on that and the command will then activate. When activated, you'll see all the options on the left hand side in the property manager. These are all the options and parameters that can control the pattern you're generating. In the direction one group box, you can specify the direction by selecting any entity that establishes a vector such as a line, axis, linear dimension or model edge. So making sure that the selection box is activated, we're going to click on this top edge of the model here and this will act as our direction. Before we adjust the parameters that control the spacing and number of instances, I want to show you something in the bottom of the property manager, which is the features and faces group box. This is where we select the geometry that we want to pattern. Selecting the geometry first will allow us to see a preview of the pattern, therefore making it easier to make any adjustments to the feature. In this area, there are a few ways you can select geometry to pattern. So the first one is features to pattern, such as extrusions or cuts or other features. You can also select faces and you can also select entire bodies. Since our button is just made of a simple extrusion, we will use the features to pattern. So clicking in that box, we can then expand our design tree if you don't have it expanded already, and then click on the boss extrude. Now you should see a preview on screen of the pattern. Let's go back to the top of the property manager and we'll start adjusting the parameters of our pattern. In case you ever want to reselect or change the direction vector, you can clear it by right clicking on it and either clearing selections or delete and then picking another direction vector. In this exercise, we don't need to change it. So just make sure that top edge is still selected. If the preview instances are going in the wrong direction, you can change that direction in two ways. You can either click on the reverse direction button or you can click on the arrow in the graphics window. So be sure that your previews are showing into the model like mine are. The next two areas define the distance between instances and the number of instances to pattern. So here you have the distance and here you have the number of instances. Patterns can be defined by distance and number of instances or by patterning up to a reference and spacing them evenly across a distance. In our exercise, we actually want to change this to up to reference. We first need to pick our reference. So similar to the direction vector, we just pick a model edge and we're going to select this edge right here as our reference edge. We have a few more options. Uh, the first is a distance and a few other options here. And instead of set spacing, we want to change to set number of instances. So we're going to specify the number of instances as four to our reference. So you should see it like this. And then we want to change our distance here to 12.5 millimeters and your preview should look similar to what I have now. You may also notice that the preview only shows three copies of the seed. This is because the number of instances is the total, including the seed geometry. To create the pattern in a second direction, we are going to go down to the direction two and expand that and continue the process. So we first need to specify our direction so we can select this as our direction. This way we're going to have the pattern both across and down. And this time we're going to stick to the default, which is the spacing and instances for our direction two. Change the distance to 20 mils and our number of instances to six. In this case, you can see that our preview is showing it in the the wrong direction. So click on the reverse direction to make sure it is showing like it is on screen now. 
you will also notice the pattern seed only checkbox. And if you click on that, you can see how the pattern changes. What this is doing is taking the seed geometry and then just patterning in one direction. And then it is taking the seed geometry again and patterning it in the other direction. So therefore only creating a pattern of the seed geometry. But when that is unticked, you have something more like this full grid of instances. What's happening here is that it is taking that first seed geometry and patterning it across in a linear fashion and then it is taking that full pattern and patterning it again downwards. So that's why you end up with this full grid look. Another option to be aware of is the, another option to be aware of is down the bottom here, instances to skip. And if you click on that to expand it, you'll notice all these little purple dots show on each instance. By clicking on these pink dots, you can actually cancel or hide or skip any instances that you like. So you can create these custom patterns if you wanted to. And if you wanted to bring those back, you could either just clear your selections here or just click on the pink dots again, which are now white to change them back. With our pattern ready, click OK to accept the changes. SOLIDWORKS also offers a convenient display option to show the seed feature within a completed linear pattern. If I click on the linear pattern here, you'll notice the different color for the seed and the instances. So one color is for the seed geometry and the other color is any instance copies of it. This allows you to quickly identify where the pattern is originating from and how the seed is driving the pattern. Also, if you hold your mouse over the linear pattern, you'll notice this flyout appear, which is full of information about the pattern. If this flyout is not appearing, it's likely because the option is turned off in the settings. If you click on the gear icon on the top of the screen, you'll open the options for SOLIDWORKS. Go to the display tab and scroll down to the bottom and you should see display pattern information tooltips. So make sure a tick is in that box and click OK. And then when you hold your mouse over the pattern, you should see the flyout. The linear pattern feature includes an option called instances to vary. When this option is enabled, it allows you to vary the spacing for each instance, as well as vary the dimensions for the pattern geometry itself. Let's go through a demonstration. Launch the linear pattern tool and go straight down to the selecting geometry section. Expand our design tree and select the boss and the two fillets. Back up on the top section in the direction one group box, activate the direction vector selection tool and click on the back edge of the model. This time we're using spacing and instances and we want to set the distance to 40 and the instances to four. Now let's go down to the very bottom of the property manager and you're looking for instances to vary. So click on that to activate it. The field at the top allows you to vary the pattern spacing by typing in a value that will increment with each instance. So let's enter a value of 10. This means the spacing between each instance will increase an additional 10 millimeters on each instance. You can also choose feature dimensions to vary throughout the linear pattern. In the graphics window, if we zoom in a bit and make sure the selection box is activated, you want to click on the 15 width and the 40 height. And when you do that, you'll see some cells appear like an Excel spreadsheet. So it will tell you the current value, which is 15 and the current height value, which is 40. You can double click on the cell and put in a value, which will increase the dimension as it varies throughout the pattern. So let's have the width increase by five millimeters on each instance and the height increase by 10 millimeters for each instance. You can also change these values in the little call out window here. It may help to add names to your dimensions so then you can add them quickly and vary them knowing what they are. Also notice that the direction two increments is grayed out and you cannot change this. This is because our current linear pattern only has one direction. If it did have a second direction, you would be able to make adjustments here. Click OK to apply the changes. And you can see as the instances continue through the pattern, it is increasing both the width and the height and also the spacing. If you want to edit a linear pattern, it is the same as any other feature. Just click on the feature in the feature manager tree and go to edit feature. 
Here you can make any further adjustments and then click OK to accept those changes. But while we're here, you may notice that as in the previous example, these pink dots appear once we edit the feature. If we click on one of those dots, you'll see a menu pop up and you have both the skip instance as in the previous demonstration, but also a modify instance. This allows you to make modifications to a specific instance in the pattern. So if we click on modify instance and you'll see the new callout appear. And what we can do is change the values for this particular instance. So we might change this 20 to a 40 and the 50 to a 60. If you then click OK, you'll notice that one particular instance has now been modified with those specific changes. And you can do this for other parts of the linear pattern as well. So this modify instance is acting as like an override to that particular instance in the pattern. That brings us to the end of the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.